Hi everybody at the Friendship Donations Network, Sandra here. Um, I'm quarantining in my apartment and as you all may know we have a surplus of milk from Wegmans in the cool bot. Um, and I'm making this very short video on my uh, poor quality laptop computer to show you how easy it is to make cheese curds with whatever you have at home, delicious squeaky cheese curds. So before we begin, a note from our sponsors, this video is brought to you by Ugly Sweaters Anonymous. Here is my gallon of milk. This is the Wegmans milk. Um, it has a sell-by date of December 6th, um, but as we are beginning to learn, um, milk does not go bad on its sell-by date. It has a couple weeks of good times left in it. In fact, this one I've been using in my coffee for the past five days, it's been delicious, and it's still great. So, here's your pot. You're going to heat, heat the milk. Just pour it all into your pot. Um, you'll, the first step is to heat the milk just to boiling. Now, some recipes call for um, a kitchen thermometer. I don't have that. But if you heat the milk just until it boils, that's the right temperature. Um, looks like I got a pot that is too small. We'll just make a smaller recipe. And um, this recipe came off of allrecipes.com. Super easy. So here it is. And I'm going to get this boiling. And I'm going to be stirring it so that it doesn't scald. So it's been about three or four minutes. I didn't bore you all with those three or four minutes, the magic passing of time, um, but I've been standing here stirring, and while I stir, I'll tell you about the other ingredients used in these easy peasy cheese curds. Uh, white vinegar, super basic. Um, I've seen recipes that can also use lemon juice. Any sort of acid is great. And then salt. That's the other thing. Stir, 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 stir. Stirring this is kind of mesmerizing and also kind of boring. It's been about, you know, five more minutes or so. Um, I do have this on medium high. I've had this on medium high the whole time. It's a nice way to stay warm in the winter. Um, and I am definitely stirring constantly because the first time I tried this, I did not stir constantly. And my cheese curds had little black flecks. It was not black pepper. It's been some time now and I haven't seen any bubbles but the boiling bubbles are not like water in this case. I don't think we'll see them. Um, the milk is really, really hot. On the top, it looks like uh, latte foam uh, when you go to the coffee shop. And it smells different than when it had at the start. It smells like hot milk, like in the olden days when, aha, it's boiling. Wow. Okay. So I am living very dangerously by using a small pot. Don't do that at home. Um, it definitely got really, really tall and started climbing up the top of the pot. So I'm going to keep stirring and I'm pouring myself a quarter cup of white vinegar, which you can't see because this is a silly video setup. But here we go. Here's the white vinegar, okay? And I'm just going to pour this into the milk. And I'm stirring, 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 stirring. It's got really frothy, and I can see the texture is changing. Um, oh my god, this is crazy! I'm going to use a little more vinegar. Um, a quarter cup might not always do it. Going to add a bit more here. And there's white clumps in the fluffy milk, so it's probably too hard to see. but. Part of the liquid is clear. It looks like melted butter. Um, and the other part is um, came, came into clumps. In the recipe, you're supposed to let it sit um, for 10 minutes after you add the vinegar, but I'm impatient. Um, so I'm, I let it sit a couple minutes, but it looks like it's done all it's going to do. So I'm going to add the salt now, which is, I don't know, a pinch. Um, they say add the salt before you strain it. Um, I actually might add some more salt after I strain it. But 
Salt's cheap, so there's some now. The next step is the draining, and for that you just need a, you know, colander and a kitchen towel that you don't mind putting through the wash afterward. Um, I've got a kitchen towel that's a little bit more porous than some of my other ones and one that is no longer my favorite. So this is set up in the sink. Some people choose to keep the whey, um, but I don't, I don't have any, I don't make bread, I don't have plans to use the whey, so I'm just going to keep those delicious squeaky cheese curds. I'm pouring this over the towel, let you guys see here. It's got, you can definitely see this liquid, and these curds! It's so exciting! I love kitchen chemistry. Oh god, look at all these great curds down here. Um, gonna dump these out. You could let this sit and drain a bit more, but I'm gonna squeeze mine a little bit. This is the extent of about 75% uh, of a gallon of milk. Um, three quarters gallon of milk yielded just this little bit amount of cheese curd, which just goes to show how intense cheese production is. So I'm squeezing out some of the extra liquid here. I don't care if they're completely dry or not. I'm going to put these on salads. Probably going to stir them into some scrambled eggs. I made some lentil dal the other day and I'll put that on top. Um, I'll put the cheese curds on top just for fun. And I'm going to sprinkle just a little bit more salt on top of them and kind of mix it in so that they can their, their wetness will sort of hold on to the salt a little bit, so I don't know what's a good amount like that, maybe. Okay. So there you go. Um, try making cheese curds. We have so much milk, it's super fun to play. They're just like this. You know, this one's still steaming. Oh, fun. It's so squeaky. Mmm, and soft, and good protein, um, yeah, it's super fun. Yeah, let me know what you think, good luck, um, and just use a bigger pot. Donations Network and anyone else who happens to come across this video, we have a surplus of bread, dinner rolls, um, Kaiser rolls, all things white carbs. And I'm making a video today to show you how to make life hack bread pudding. This is the bread pudding recipe for people who don't have the time to devote to a bread pudding recipe. There's going to be zero bowls involved in this. And there's multitudes of options for bread pudding. I'm going to make a dairy-free chocolate walnut bread pudding, but you could do caramel apple, 
you could do a savory bed pudding and use jalapenos like that and cheddar cheese and salsa. Um, you could do a gingerbread spice bread pudding with candied ginger and your Christmas spices of allspice and nutmeg and cinnamon. The, the sky's the limit. You can also Google a recipe, um, but I don't like measuring things, so I just do the dump and go method, which I will be using tonight. So apologies if you really wanna have a recipe, uh, I can send you a full on recipe if you like that too, but this is just the, um, the very easiest life hack version. So you take your bread. Um, any kind of bread will work, literally any kind, and unless you're like really picky and don't love caraway and rye or something. But these are just, um, you know, standard white rolls. These are a little bit more tough. Um, it doesn't matter what size you cut them in. Um, the smaller, the better. The smaller means that more liquid is going to soak up into their um, bread interstitial spaces and get ooey gooey. So that was one kind of the rolls, a little harder to cut up. This is a fluffier roll. Um, this is going to be a little, little, little bit nicer. Um, I, if I can get my hands on old challah bread, that is my favorite for bread pudding. Um, so you just cut, cut, cut. Sometimes if I am feeling extra lazy or want to like get my hands busy, I'll just rip, right? Dismantle bread until you have roughly the volume that you think would roughly fit in a pan. Any pan, whatever. I'm feeding friends, so here's my pan. Now this part is where a little bit of intuition comes in. You're going to mix the liquid ingredients right in the pan. Now some of you might be concerned that this is going to cause um, some sticking problems in the pan once you try to make a serving. Well, if you're anything like me, all you want to do is stand there over the warm stove and scrape the bottom of the pan, those little pieces that don't want to come out. So I love doing that. So no grease for my pan because I don't care. But if you care, mix it in a separate bowl. So I poured in some um, dairy-free silk soy milk. You could use oat milk, you could use almond milk, you could use cashew milk, anything liquid. Um, milk spelled with a Y, M, Y, L, K. And here's some local eggs going in here. And as I said, this is the intuitive part. So it's like, okay, do I want this to be fairly rich and eggy? Then add some more eggs. I think with the size of this pan, three will be very lovely and plenty. So mix, 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 mix. Froth, froth, froth. Mixing, mixing, mixing in the pan, which is, you know, could make a mess if I wasn't completely careful. Um, I'm gonna add a little bit of oil. Although if you're feeling like the bread and the other stuff is gonna be guilty enough, you don't necessarily need oil. I've definitely made this without oil, but it's fine. And here's my cocoa powder. Love the bulk section. Sprinkle this in. This is gonna be a bit more of a fuss to mix in. Um, but that's all right. Cause it'll be a little powdery. So there's, the, there's that. And here's some sugar. And you might be asking, how much sugar? Well, trial and error, I guess. Um, you can also just sort of visualize like, um, how much sugar is going into this whole pan? What's a serving going to look like out of this pan? I don't want to make this too sweet. So I'm putting in, that's about a half cup. I'm visualizing about a half cup in my mind. That brown sugar is going to take a little bit. What else do I want to put in here? Um, I want a little bit of nutmeg, just because nutmeg is a super warming, delicious, uh, delicious spice. I add nutmeg to macaroni and cheese when I make that, believe it or not. Here's a little cinnamon. And again, we're going chocolate, but I think these spices had a really interesting sort of overtone to the chocolate. And that's all I want to add at this point. Um, a little salt and vanilla. Oops. A little salt and vanilla will be great too. But mix, mix, mix. If you have no um, problems eating raw eggs, this is where you get to taste how you're doing. So I'm just going to pick up a little piece here and see how we're doing. All right, I got the salt. Salt's there. Um, it's decently sweet. Um, I'd say my mix is good, but if for some reason you taste it and you're like, oh, this is not nearly sweet enough, 
You take your sugar, you sprinkle more on. That's easy. If it's too sweet, then you add some more bread and milk and it balances out. So I'm gonna have to be mixing this for a while. And I can see that there's some white hunks of bread Ta -da, that did not get moist enough because the point of bread pudding is to be luxurious and moist and squishy. So I'm just gonna pour a little milk over top and that milk is gonna mix with the chocolate and the sugar and everything that's already in there. The counter argument is that I could have just measured everything, but how do I know if I like a recipe or not, unless I've tried it already? But I do know that I will like the balance of the sweet and the chocolate and everything in this because it's sort of an iterative process. And I'm going to go do something else for 10 minutes while this soaks, because that's super important for all of the uh, moist goodness to soak up into that dry bread. So about 10 minutes have gone by, indicated by the fact that I'm wearing this hat. I preheat the oven to about 350 and everything has soaked and it's looking really good. When in doubt, add more milk. Basically the bread will soak it up even more in the oven. The oven is a really great um, neutralizer of all things. So here's some dark chocolate chips. I'm gonna sprinkle these on. These are gonna add little, little magical sugar bits and some walnuts. I'm very, very excited about this. I'll show you. Here we are. So bread, walnuts, chocolate chips, our non-dairy milk, and super simple and zero anything to wash except for the pan when we're done eating it. All right, about 20 minutes has passed and I'm wearing my coming out of the oven hat. Um, and so I failed to, sh to share with you all how long to put it in for. So I usually put it in for 20 minutes um, and I'll check it after 20 minutes. I never trust a timer because some people like things a little bit softer. Uh, you know when it's done when it's no longer shiny, but instead like a matte finish. So here we go. Another trick is to put a um, bowl or a pan of water in the oven, which helps keep things a little moist. Here we are. This is an awkward angle, but so we got our roasted walnuts. Um, we've got the matte finished bread. The chips are ooey gooey. All right, with my favorite reuse center spatula, we're going to cut ourselves a slice. Mmm, here we are. And it came out pretty well. There's a big empty spot. You can even see the bottom of the pan. Here we go. I wish I could share this with everybody, um, but I'm pretty excited about it. You can see that the bread um, is all nice and chocolate covered on the inside. It got soaked up. The walnuts are golden and the chocolate chips are gooey. So I consider this a success.